The NSERS panel report is illegal, says Festus Kayamo. He also says dialogue to lift Twitter ban is in progress. And Nigerians will experience multi-dimensional suffering, says Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacone. The Minister of State for Labour and Employment, Festus Kiyamo, SAN, has dismissed the NSAS panel set up by the Lagos State Government and the report it presented recently. He said it was out of the jurisdiction of the panel to investigate the activities of federal government institutions and officials such as Nigeria Police Force and the Nigerian Army. He also explained why the ban on Twitter has not been lifted, saying the dialogue to lift the ban is in progress with few conditions yet to be met. Well, joining us to discuss this are legal practitioners Chris Itamanola and Mondi Ubani. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for having us. Great. Um, Barsabani, I'm going to start by asking, what does the minister mean by the panel is illegal. When he says the panel is illegal, what exactly is he pointing to? Yes, uh, I, I watched him last night uh, on television where he strenuously tried as much as possible to uh, condemn uh, the panel that was set up by the governors all across the country by saying that it was illegal and he each uh, the name illegality to those panels on the ground that uh, they were investigating Nigerian police and Nigerian army, which according to him does not have uh, uh, to uh, appear before those panels because they don't have jurisdiction. They are federal agencies, you know, over which leg uh, Lagos State or any other state has legislative competence. He cited section uh, 21 of Tribunal of Inquiries Law because according to him, under that particular section, it's only matters that are within the legislative competence of the state government that the, the panel of inquiry can exercise a jurisdiction over. That was what he was trying to explain. And we uh, we laughed at that uh, explanation because he wasn't right, both in law and in logic. Because what transpired and what actually went on with the tribunals is quite different from what he was alluding, alluding to. Uh, they were not asked to investigate a promotion of the Nigerian uh, military or army or to draw up policies with regards to Nigerian army or police, or to talk about their recruitment or discipline. Uh, the, the tribunals that were set up was with regards to violation of the rights, violation of the rights uh, of the citizen and how to, you know, uh, concern the issue of security of the state. And so the, the governors and the state government have jurisdiction over issue of insecurity or security, and they also have jurisdiction over uh, complaints of violations of rights, especially when we know that 1999 Constitution uh, does not have any any provision for uh, what you call a Tribunal of Inquiry, you know, Act that is a, a applicable to all over the Federation. The, the Tribunal of Inquiry Act is today yeah, is only applicable to uh, federal capital territory. The states have what you call residual jurisdiction over uh, is the issue of panel of inquiries. And when they have that residual power, they have a right to set up panel that deals with issue of uh, uh, the matter that affects them, you know, affects the state. Mm -hmm. And even, even issue of public welfare, not only issue of uh, matter that affect them, but issue of public welfare, they have a right to set up an inquiry or investigation into such conduct of any public officer including officers that are federal government agencies, as long as they those things happen within the jurisdiction uh, where the panel is set up, like Lagos. And it borders on issue that the state has jurisdiction, like issue of violations of rights. There is nothing that precludes Lagos State or any other state for that matter to set up a panel of inquiry to look into that situation. So I fought uh, the Leonard Silk, uh, and that is the uh, first of Kayambo, who spoke not as the minister, according to him, but uh, as a lawyer. And so he was talking law, and so we also have to follow him uh, with the express provisions of the law that actually contradicted his uh, position he held yesterday on Channel's television. Now, 
when he went, because a lot of people who may not necessarily understand, you know, um, the law and the different sections, and of course the fact that he was, you know, referring to the tribunal of inquiries, um, the people who are also wondering that if he's dismissing this panel, is he dismissing this panel um, and dismissing the government, including? the reasons why this panel was set up. Is he trying to send a message to Nigerians, including the governor of Lagos State, who set up that panel, and the members of the panel, which includes a senior advocate of Nigeria, is he, dis is he dismissing every single day and hour that was expended on that panel of inquiry or to investigate all that happened during um, that Lekki Toll uh, Plaza situation or incident? Is he saying that none of this will see the light of day? Is he also saying that if this report is, not, is taken up, it will not hold water in court? Is this what he's implying? I, I, I don't, I don't, that's why a lot of, many Nigerians are really expressing shock at that uh, expression yesterday. And of course, you can see that the social media is clearly agog. Uh, with regards to that statement that uh, Festus Kayamo uh, posited yesterday, it's clearly shocking. Uh, first of all, KMO never raised any issue as to the legitimacy or illegality of that panel uh, when it was constituted. I never see any of his write-up or any public opinion in which he has actually said that the panel shouldn't have been set up in the first place. Remember that this panel came as a result of an emergency meeting of a National Economic Council that was presided over by the learned uh, senior advocate of Nigeria, the current uh, vice president of the country, Professor Osibajo, Yemi Osibajo, senior advocate of Nigeria, and many other important personalities uh, in Nigeria that make up that uh, council. They came up with the idea that in the light of the NSAS protests and, and then the aftermath effect and all the hoods and cries, that it is important that a panel be set up to address and hear what these young men, you know, that true and young ladies that took into the street, what were their grievances, and see what we can do to address them. And so it was consequent upon that, and the governors agreed that something has to be done because these things arose from their various states. And so it was a cons there was a consensus added them that panel of inquiry should be set up. And federal government should also set up their own in Abuja. Abu I think it was either the Human Rights Commission that also set up one in Abuja. And so all this while, the police, the army, all of them attended those uh, panels and submitted to, to, to their jurisdiction and, and gave evidence. And so for somebody now, just uh, because he was invited to a national television to now say that everything that happened in all those panels were clearly illegal and a, a waste of time, clearly shocking. And I, 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 I don't know the basis upon which, you know, but I, I want to say this. Uh, since the panel's report in Lagos was made public, uh, I have uh, heard several persons running health as trying to deny uh, the truth of what was recommended or what was their findings. You know? So they try as much as possible to, for us to believe the lie they told, that there was no death. And, and it's shocking because that was not only the reason why that panel in Lagos State was set up. It was set up to address the issue of human rights violation. And secondly, it was after the death that occurred in Lakey Phase 2 that Lagos State added the issue of Lakey Togate. It wasn't the first issue. But nobody's even addressing the issue because the, the findings of the panel indicted the army and police for the shooting that took place. So they tried to uh, make us believe that there was no shooting, there was no death whatsoever. And that's why they, they are coming out with all this manner of uh, uh, manipulations and, 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 and statements, which clearly will be, you know, to the Lagos State government not to actually obey whatever has been recommended. That is actually what I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to see with all these posturings, you know, that is going on. First with uh, Lai Mohammed and now with uh, uh, Festus Kayamo, who happens to be a minister, but who denied that he's no longer talking like a minister, that he's only speaking as a lawyer. So okay. I, I think that it's about the the indictment that, to, you know, that was found in that recommendation of the panel, or the findings of the panel, that is making them to do everything in order to rubbish what has been the findings of that panel. That is my take, that's my take in this. Okay. Um, Barsley Tamanola, I'm going to toss the question to you now. Dr. Bani here is implying that um, this, the, the federal government or government officials are trying to rubbish um, the report that had been submitted um, by this Lagos State panel. By the way, I'd always, I always like to plug in that different panels were set up. We've not heard anything from those panels, including that in your state. Um, but then Lagos State has decided to, re uh, to re you know, send out its report. They presented it to the governor. Um, 
Why do you think Mr. President asked that these panels be set up, but then again, allegedly is trying to rubbish the report? Well, um, first was Keanu. Uh, before he became a minister, incidentally he was an acclaimed in inverted comma, um, a freedom fighter, a, um, a human rights uh, fundamentalist. And now that he's in government, um, what he's simply doing um, is to do what he thinks uh, is his job. And that is to wrongly um, put the government in a bad light. Um, what is important is, it, does the Lagos State government have a right? In the first instance, um, where is the location? What is the venue of the incident? It took place in Lagos State. And does the Lagos State have the powers to constitute a, a, a panel to be able to investigate, to look into this particular incident? The answer is yes. It becomes even more when it is barred by the federal government. I mean, it is the, it is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that gave a bite, a tit, to this particular panel. But now, it, I, I'm sure Kayamo is trying to come from an angle that because there are soldiers, because there are security agencies, there are tribunals that ought ordinarily, in the event that they are found culpable or they ought their tribal, that it is the tribunals that, special military tribunals that ought to have tried them. But that's not the issue. What is important here is the fact that no matter how um, unconstitutional the, that panel is expected to be, um, the parties and the witnesses submitted themselves voluntarily, just like my colleague has said. And once you do so, in law, you have waived your rights. And just like you have indicated, my colleague has stated, prior to this particular time, Kayamo never went to the courts to, to challenge the, uh, the powers of this particular tribunal. But Kayamo never made any contrary statement. And see, um, if we have to go forward as a country, and we have to take a cue from civilized nations like in Europe, even as far back, as close as in South Africa. Some of this will never be. Look at the former president of the of the South Africa, of South Africa committed contempt. What was it? Content of not coming to court to answer to be answerable to, to to questions of corruption. And what happened? As we are talking, he was thrown into the cell at least to go and put down there. So as far as I know, it's unfortunate that Keamo, who is on, who says is uh, by 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 virtue of his position is senior advocate of Nigeria to make this comment is to say the least unfortunate. Um, just before we continue, I think that you're in a very echoey place, so we we we're struggling to hear you. It's very echoey where you are. I, I would I would ask that you go someplace else that is not as echoey. But I, I want to also add to you know the issue of. Um, the statements that he made. He talked about the fact that this massacre that is being referred to in the panel's report is only in context. What do you think he meant by that? Because this has also been a subject of debate um, by government aides, you know, saying that, I mean, Lai Mohammed, the, the Minister of Information, has continuously said over and over that there was no massacre at the toll gate. Recently, he referred to um, the report as Tales by Moonlight. This is just another way of also undermining um, the incidences. You know, one thing we've got to appreciate in this country is that the government pays very less attention to the issue of uh, welfare and security, which is the primary responsibility of any government that is there. Even if it is only one life that has been killed, it doesn't matter whether there are four, five, seven lives that were killed. And of course, here again, it also shows uh, our security ineptitude. Here again, definitely one thing is certain. I mean, it begs the issue that it's high time we had a 
with on our streets at strategic points, CCTVs and the rest of that. But our society is so depraved in such a manner that even if you have inst installed uh, this security uh, 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 facilities, it's not impossible that somebody will still go at that particular uh, 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 forum or fora to ensure that at least uh, in order to subvert the, 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 the cause of justice, that things that ought to be to aid, you know, are. So to, for Kiyama to say that it's just a particular part, there was a, a, a gathering, a lawful gathering, and a peaceful gathering. And of course, until the security agencies uh, infiltrated into the arena to start shooting sporadically, the evidences are there. The, the foot are there. CNN carried the footages to the effect that, I mean, innocent citizens of Nigeria were shot at, you know, without any defense of any, any, any type or whatsoever. So it's unfortunate. Back to you, Dr. Bani. Um, let's look at the implications of this report that has been re um, given to the Lagos state government. Um, I remember uh, that the same week when that report was presented to the governor, um, the federal government released a statement saying that they, they don't necessarily have to, um, the report is not supposedly to be presented to them. But what happens to the report? Because Nigerians are very curious. People want to know what happens. Yes, the report has been presented to the governor. Uh, they're going to do due diligence. But what are the processes that will be involved in getting justice, especially for the victims of this police brutality and, of course, the killings at the toll gate? Well, we, we have to uh, actually adhere strictly to what the Lagos State government uh, said when the report was handed over to the governor. I remember that he set up there and then a four-man committee that is headed by his attorney general. And according to him, they have to review the findings of the panel. And after which they will issue a white paper. Uh, that white paper will actually be a roadmap to implementing whatever recommendation has been made uh, by the by the panel, so it may be very premature for me now to uh, guess what they want to do in the circumstance. But I think that the best thing we need to offer now is an advice that it is in the interest of the Lagos State Government not to rubbish the findings of the panel that they set up. They made so many promises when they set up this panel, and many Nigerians did not believe them. Some of us, you know, went out of our way to really cajole and advise Nigerians to hold on that the government would not in any way fail in this regard because it's a matter of public interest. Lives were lost. There were violations of rights. And there was so much tension in the land as a result of the uproar of those violations. It's an accumulated anger. And we felt that the only way to redress that injustice, you know, is for government to intervene, which is what they did by setting up the panel. And the fine panel has made out their, their findings and recommendations. It will be very wrong now for the same government that made those promises, you know, that made people to believe that they were genuine in really readdressing the issue of injustice and, and grievances that were expressed by, by those young ones, to now turn around and do something that is different. I don't believe, I have this belief that the Lagos State government will leave up the expectation by issuing a white paper that will lead to the finding of the lasting solution to this problem. That is what I think. Despite all the hulala of, of whatever is going on now, all the noise. But has there been a precedent? The... Because there has to be a precedence of sorts. Why, why should Nigerians trust the process now? Yes, we have seen that this the panel has done its bit. But with all of the shouting, the hues and the cries, is there anything, any shred of hope that the average Nigerian can hold on to being that? Politicians in this country have made promises and they failed to fulfill those promises. So why should we start now to have hope? It's an intelligent question. You know, if they fail in this regard, it goes to add to all the, you know, evidence of lack of trust that they, they generate themselves, they create it, and that nobody trusts them. So it will be an additional aspect of evidence that this government is uh, never meant well in the first place. As my learned friend has rightly pointed out, the primary responsibility of any government is actually the protection of life and property and the welfare of the people. Now that issue of welfare came up and government set up a panel to address that grievance, and that panel has made findings and recommendations, will it be right for that, that same government to just rubbish all the, all the money, 
all the time, everything I was spent in now making a finding to address that injustice, you know. So I want to still believe that we should give them that opportunity to do the right thing. Rather than me now jumping to conclusion and I say, oh, I'm not going to believe them. There is no basis for that. Yeah, there have been instances where they have felt. But this is going to be an additional aspect of this evidence that this government never meant well in the first place when they campaigned in 2014 and 15. If they fail to, and we are waiting for them in 2023. So I don't believe that uh, uh, the, the current governor, Shaolu, Shaolu will, uh, after all the time he has wasted with these professionals, retired justice, senior advocate of Nigeria, the civil rights society group, the young ones, they all came together to, you know, sat, they sat for several months without, you know, I, I know some of them that couldn't even attend any program because of this particular sitting. They considered it very important okay. more than any other thing. And then after the whole exercise, the government comes with a different thing entirely. It will be very, very okay. shocking. Okay. It will be clearly, clearly unbelievable. All right. Quickly, um, we have just one more minute. Um, Barista um, Itamanola, why do you think that there is so much push and shove as a result since after this report has uh, been submitted? Is there anything that the, the federal government is afraid of? No. The federal government is not going to implement anything good. Why the federal government, insofar as this state government, the legal state government is part of the administration of President Buhari, my hope before now, usually it would have been that something positive will come out. But this government of President Buhari has a track record of disobeying laws and court orders. So no matter how well this panel has sat down, Ben taking like my colleague has stated, no matter what you are talking, they, I mean, it is one thing for the verdict to come. It is another thing for Lagos state government under the federal government to implement. And I'm saying, the people have no trust, no confidence. Even me, I'm so certain at the end of the day, these documents from this panel will just go into the trash bin. Well, I hope, I hope that they prove you wrong. Um, <laughs> Christy Tamanola, um, Monday Obani, thank you very much for being part of the conversation. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having us. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Um, we'll take a quick break. And when we return, we're looking at the cost of living in Nigeria because the Christian Association of Nigeria is saying that we might be experiencing multidimensional suffering. Stay with us. <laughs>